All right, so we left off here. I just turned off the first floor plan underlay. The next step to finishing up these interior walls is get all the other walls in place. And the way that I typically do this, I think I did this on the first floor, was I just get these walls in. I don't worry about exact placement. I go back later and make them work. So I'm going to go back to my wall tool. I'm going to be using the same setup as before, so I don't really have to check that. Just have to glance at it. And I know that I have a closet in here. It's got a wall splitting that closet into two separate closets. I know that I have a closet here into the hallway. And then there's a closet in here again with the wall separating. I have a bathroom that does something like this. I think I drew that wall way too high, but again, it does not matter. I can always come in later and fix this. And I'll do that uh, several steps from now. What I want to do now is I'll change my 3D view. And again, it's always a good idea every now and then. I know I typically say in my Revit creation method, or you know the pattern that we use to create anything Revit, I check a third view, a 3D view, or uh, an elevation view where I can see this stuff to make sure that I am creating the things in three dimensions the way that I had meant to. Um, I don't have to do it after every step, but it is a good idea every now and then to check and make sure that you've done that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle the first floor, or I should say the porch roof that goes over this first floor section over here. And what I'm going to do is go to my second floor plan and turn on my underlay again. So range, underlay range, base level, first floor. Again, as I noted, I'll be, do I'll be turning that on and off quite a bit. So now I want to create my roof that goes over this porch. So I'm going to go to the roof tool. I click the down arrow sometimes. There's many different ways of creating a roof. Typically, you're going to be using roof by footprint which means we're going to draw a boundary line and that's going to be the roof's footprint. So what I want to do now is this roof, I'm not going to tie it to the walls um, for several reasons. It has to do mostly with its height, but we are going to actually use the line tool. Although I'm not following my own Revit creation method, so let's do that. Once I get into the roof tool, I check my type. I'm going to go to this one, Wood Rafter 8-inch Asphalt Shingle Insulated. Now, we're going to use this type that's in here, this default type. At a later stage, we're going to change the material of the top layer from Asphalt Shingle to be Standing Seam. But we'll do that later. So we do, for now, we're going to set the base level of this thing to be the second floor the rest of this is good. There's an, there's no offset for now. The rafter cut is going to be a two cut plumb and the fascia depth is going to be eight inches. I'm going to apply that. So that matches again the building that we've previously documented in AutoCAD. Same, same fascia depth. So now we come over here What I want to do, because I'm drawing this, I'm going to trace the outline of my walls, but remember, our roof overhangs one foot four. So what I can do this way is I can say offset one foot four. And when I draw a line here, it's going to offset that line. Now, this piece of roof does not define slope, so I have to uncheck that, and I'm going to draw this line. 
Now it's offsetting to the wrong side. Well, that's interesting. Let me retry this. So boundary line. In the middle of the command, while it's offsetting to the inside, press the space bar and it will offset to the opposite side. Now this edge defines slope, so I actually have to hit escape, then check define slope, and then come back down and restart the command. Again, it's going to the wrong side, so I can just press space bar, come all the way down to here. This side does define slope and then this side defines slope. Hit escape again, uncheck define slope, and then, well, the problem is now I don't have an offset, so let me undo that. I'm just gonna go back up to boundary line, line. Now my offset's zero, now I don't define slope, and I'm just gonna simply trace my exterior walls at this point. Now these, these lines did not connect, so if I go to my green check mark, they are not going to, uh, it's going to throw an error because these do not connect. So use that trim command, trim the corner. It's also TR is the shortcut. That's what I just pressed. Hit escape. Now, this roof, this, the default slope is 9 and 12. We need to change that before we hit the green check mark or our roof is going to have too much slope. This roof has a 3 and 12 roof slope. So we type 3 and 12, hit apply. All of this looks good. We can hit the green check mark, and there's our roof. We can go to a 3D view and see what that looks like. And the problem is, we set that we drew this at the second floor. So the bottom of this roof where it, where it springs from down here is at the second floor. That's too high. What we want to do is have this at 8 foot 6, or the bottom of this fascia at 8 feet 6. So let's go to a south elevation, and you can see here that it is aligned to the second floor. So how do we get this to 8 feet 6? We can simply move this, or we can say that instead of drawing this or uh, having this constrained to the second floor, what we can do is first set this to be 8 foot 6 offset, and then change that offset to be from the first floor. Hit apply, and now our roof is constrained to the base level or sorry, the first floor, and its offset is 8 foot 6. Now, you can see that that creates a problem with our columns and our walls here. So what we're going to do is select those walls, and then select these columns, and I'm just doing this in a 3D view using holding control to add to my selection set. And clicking on them. I'm being very careful when I'm clicking to make sure that I'm just getting those things. So I have all of those things selected and I can't do what I wanted to do. The problem is I have to select the walls and the columns as one, so that was a mistake. So now that I have just the wall selected, I get the attach top button. Click that, select the roof, and it fixes the walls. So now they, they attach to that roof. Now I can go back, being very careful to select all the columns, although that's slow, so what I can do is right click, select all instances, visible in view, I get all of my columns, attach top base on the context ribbon, select the roof, and they all trim down to the roof. So I'm going to move to the upper floor, or sorry, the upper roof. So I going to the second floor now, you can see the roof there. If I turn this underlay off again, that's what my drawing looks like. 
if I go to the roof plan, I don't see anything. Again, because we created this view and there is no underlay. So now I'm going to change my underlay to the second floor to draw my upper roof. The upper roof's a little bit easier than the lower roof. We're going to go to roof. It remembers that our last type was wood rafter 8 inch asphalt shingle insulated, so we're good to go there. It understands that since I'm at the top of wall level, it's called top of wall level, but we're in the roof view. That's the corresponding view. Our base offset is going to be zero. It even remembers that our last time that we used this, we had a two cut plumb eight inch. So there's less work that we have to do this time once we get it set up. It remembers our last settings. We are going to place our overhang in here now because we are going to select the walls this time to create the roof. We are going to extend into wall core just like we did uh, in week in the, um, the intro to Revit tutorial. And we are going to check the define slope button when we need it to define slope. So this long edge here and this long edge define slope because these edges are our gables. So these walls that are our gables do not define slope. So we can simply click on them. Again, make sure that you're hovering over the outside face so that it, that it offsets the overhang towards the outside. Now we can check define slope and choose this side. Now we can choose this wall to define slope and this wall. These walls define slope and the gable roof over this portion and the gable roof over this portion are the same slope. So we can simply, actually if they, whether or not they have the same slope, they, it goes around this entire footprint. So we just keep clicking. Now these two define slope, this does not. So that's another gable. So that's what I should, should see at this point. I have my long edges here and here defining slope, my short edges, well actually this is pretty square, but these two defining slope, and then these are my gables, they do not define slope. I'm going to use the default slope because that's actually what this is, it's a 9 and 12 roof. We hit the green check mark, and there's our roof. Again, we're in a plan that's cutting this off, so we have to look at a 3D view to see what we have. And just like that, our roof is done. Just like last week's intro to Revit, we are going to select the gable walls. So in this case, it's three walls. Go up to our context ribbon, click attach top, and then click the roof, and it extends our gables up. We're going to go back to our roof plan, and just like our intro project, the view settings are cutting off our roof. So we have to change those, again, with nothing selected, our properties palette shows our view settings. We come in here, now we can turn off our underlay, we don't need to see our second floor anymore, and we need to change our view range. We're cutting through our roof, so this four foot cut plane is not working. We're going to have to increase this probably higher than seven foot six. So the first thing we need to do is change the top to much higher than four foot. You could also just change this to level above. I believe actually that might not work. Let's see if that works. If we change this to something like 12 feet, that does work. So if you change this to level above, the offset doesn't matter. Actually, you would probably change this to zero then. Yes, and that works. So level above, even though there isn't a level above, I think that's essentially like changing it to unlimited. Then we can change our cut plane to whatever we want um, on this level. 12 feet did the trick. If if you don't, if you try a, a number and it still cut it, is cutting this off, you know, just keep trying. Basically, you have to think about how tall your roof is at the slope that you've created. This works for us. We're going to hit OK. 
we can go to our 3D view. 